Hello there, it's Pumlani M. Majosi, the author of a new book, Lessons from Past Heroes. This is the Pumlani Majosi show where we give you a black conservative perspective on local and global um, socioeconomic affairs. It's awesome to be back. I was in the US of A last month. Yes, this past June, I was in America and got to meet smart, intelligent, gifted, uh, accomplished people um, in the fields of um, business, um, economics, um, you know, uh, politics as well, as well, really was an honor. Um, amongst those people was David Brooks of the New York Times. Yes, the longtime author and columnist uh, and journalist really is a, a very successful person. When I asked him about his encounter with late um, Nobel economist Milton Friedman, he said, he taught me economics. Yes, that's what um, David Brooks um, told me about um, Milton Friedman. And, and uh, as you do know, in, you know, in this show, Milton Friedman is one, of course, uh, of our heroes. I'm sure you, you can see one of his books here, um, uh, Capitalism and Freedom. That's because we do believe that he did remarkable things to advance um, human liberty. So he really was a great man. Professor Larry Summers, I met him. Ah, oh, what an awesome man. Um, as he was the former, he's the former president of Harvard University, he also served um, in um, President Barack Obama's um, economic council. So really was an honor to meet him. When I told him about our, re about our recent election here in South Africa, he said, interesting what's going on there. Really was Awesome to meet the man. Uh, also got to meet Common, yes. The famous musician, actor Common. Uh, really was an honor to meet him. Um, a very nice person. Uh, so really it was uh, an awesome experience to be on the American um, soil. I also, uh, you know, I was very honored to be invited to the Aspen Ideas uh, Festival 2024. Really was an honor to be there and to be one of the speakers as well. I was part of, of a panel that discussed uh, the future of Africa. You know, what, what are the challenges, um, are the opportunities um, for Africa um, in the 21st century? What is it Africa that has to, to get, um, that it must uh, get right? So it really was an honor to be part of the of, 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 a, of a panel that was discussing Africa. Uh, on the panel, of course, was me. The second person was, um, was um, Obia Geli, Ezekwesili, the, the former presidential candidate in Nigeria. If you Google her, you are going to learn a lot about the amazing things she has done on the global stage, not, not just in Nigeria, but, but also on the global stage as well. And uh, it was, there was also um, uh, Chiedo Nwanko, of, of Johns Hopkins University. She, she's an international relations um, expert. So it really was an honor to, to sit in a, in a, on, a, on a panel with such um, remarkable people, you know, remarkable ladies who were just, um, you know, uh, sitting with me there and trying to untangle um, Africa, the African continent. Of, and and, and the, the panel discussion was um, moderated by uh, Elliot, uh, Elliot um, Garson. So really was an honor for him to moderate our panel on Africa. And you know, there were there are key things that I raised there uh, when I was in that panel. Um, the first one was around, Elliot asked me as to, um, to, 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 to tell the world about South Africa's recent election, right? Uh, what it means, uh, the outcome, the May 29 election, what the outcome uh, why did we have the outcome that, that that we that we got and what is the way forward for south africa and my answer was that look our democracy is at work in south africa i'm very happy with our democratic processes with where uh, you know with uh, where we are as a nation here is a liberation party a party the african national congress that liberated black people um 30 years into its dominance it's now losing power and guess what? When it lost power, uh, losing its, ma its majority, what did it do, right? It just, it considered that it had lost and, um, and was open to 
uh, be part of the new phase of coalition government uh, and was involved in facilitating that process. So really it was the transition has been smooth so far and it was really awesome. It was great. It's been great to witness that. You know, I cited the economist, um, uh, one of the economist, uh, one of the economist uh, magazines um, uh, articles um, that that um, uh, that was written not long time ago, uh, and um, in that article, the economist um, argued that South Africa's democracy, yes, it does have its own flaws, but it remains a democracy that does better in comparison to many to many countries um, around sub-saharan africa so um and i thought the economist was right to highlight that that south africa's democracy is at work you know we do have the institute the institutions here uh we do have the media right you may not agree with what they say with what they say but you know they're there and they are holding um our leaders to to to, to account we do have an active civil society uh, i've been part of that civil society for a long time so this is a democracy at work in the African continent. And on May 29, people came out to hold their leaders to account. Um, so I would really, I told the world that our democracy in South Africa, I think it's doing well, and we should be happy about that. Now, um, um, Elliot asked me as to, his second question was, how would I advise the new government in South Africa? Where must, what should be the areas they must focus on, the areas that they must prioritize to address the social economic challenges that we face in the country? My answer was, we need stronger job creation. Yes, we must focus um, in creating um, more jobs in the country. When you have uh, the highest unemployment rates in the world, when you have plus, plus 11 million people, jobless, you know, hopeless, and most of them are young people. That's a very big problem that you face in your society. So I spoke about the the importance of job creation. That more jobs must be the more jobs must be created. There has to be a, you know a, a speedy job creation job creation process. That is what I spoke about. I spoke about the second point I made was about crime. We have a serious we have a crime crisis in this country, where people are losing lives daily because of violent crime. It's an issue that needs to be addressed. Um, you know, uh, and my point was that you need stronger law enforcement to suppress crime, to get rid of criminals in our communities. That is very important. So the new government must, 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 ad must address the crime crisis that we face um, in the country. I thought that was very important to make. And Another point I made, which is very, very important. Now, this is with respect to the entire African continent. That is, Africa's problems can only be resolved or addressed by us Africans. They cannot be addressed by some um, foreign institutions or foreign governments. There's nothing the US or the EU or the Chinese or the Russians can do to address our problems in this continent. We have, to add, we have to address our problems as Afghan people. It's us. We have to fix the issues of governance, right? Deal with the issues of corruption. Imple implement, you know, policy reforms that will attract investors, investors, you know, implement policies that will make our own people to be productive and innovative, um, you know, um, to participate, you know, robustly in the, in the, in the, in the market system. So it's us as Africans, we have, to, we have to fix our problems. They cannot be fixed by other people. And we cannot keep on saying that we were once oppressed, we were, we were once colonized. That's long gone now. It's long gone now. There, were, there are many countries that have been colonized before, yet they managed to you know, come back um, and um, to, to build um, after, after they had been uh, colonized. So it's us as people of Africa who have to address our social economic problems. I also spoke about the negative impact of, uh, of the Cold War II that um, Sir uh, Neil Ferguson has been uh, speaking about over the, in recent years. 
and that is there is now a new cold war between the US and China. And my point was that if this new cold war intensifies, it's going to have a negative impact for Africa's peoples. Yes, for Africans, this will have a, neg a negative impact. Hence, peace and um, you know good relations, good relations between the US and China and other powers as well on the global stage um, um, is what is what is in the interest um, of us African people. So those are the three points that I made at Ospen Ideas um, Festival. Really was an honor to be part of that occasion. Um, remember to to get yourself a copy of my book Lessons from Past Heroes at a bookstore near you. My website is pumlanimajosi dot com. That's where we, that's where we are going to get to learn about my work. I'm also on X at Pumlani M. Majosi. I'm on Facebook, Pumlani M. Majosi. I'm on LinkedIn as well, Pumlani M. Majosi. On Instagram, I'm at Pumlani M. Majosi. So please do follow me. Do um, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Remember, in this show here, we are trying to give you common sense on economics and politics. We'll chat soon.